the brilliant Canadian filmmaker David Cronenberg more or less invented a horror subgenre in the early 1970s. His films from this decade and the 80s are referred to as body horror movies. They are labelled as such for a very good reason. I'm Stephen Archibald and welcome to my movie podcast. If you think you're not afraid of the dark, if you think you have a strong stomach, if you feel nothing can shock you, if you say you don't scare easily, if you believe you've seen everything, then prepare yourself for a motion picture that takes you beyond fear. Hello, and welcome to my podcast. They came from within, cult movie reviews. Love is Contagious, Shivers, 1975. David Cronenberg started out by making the experimental short movies, Transfer and From the Drain. He then tried his hand at a couple of one hour projects, Stereo in 1969 and Crimes of the Future in 1970. Now, these were creations filled with disturbing ideas and images, but they certainly did not hint at just how outlandish Cronenberg's debut big screen movie would be. Shivers is a polarizing movie. It will either shock and delight you, or it will shock and disgust you. Needless to say, I belong in the former camp. Dr. Emil Hobbs had created a remarkable breed of parasite, capable of taking over the function of a human organ, thereby replacing a failing one, a noble and revolutionary breakthrough on the surface. The snag is, they come with serious side effects, and with Hobbes having known, they serve as a powerful aphrodisiac. The movie commences in a highly disorientating manner, inside a state-of-the-art complex known as Starliner Towers. We see a middle-aged man attack a teenage girl dressed in her school uniform. Hobbs ends up killing the unfortunate youngster before cutting her open and filling her lifeless corpse with acid. He then cuts his own throat. These events aren't quite depicted in as graphic a manner as I've described, but they remain pretty gruesome. These parasites are capable of multiplying rapidly and they transform their hosts into sex-mad psychopaths. Further still, they can worm their way into and out of people's bodies. The schoolgirl, who was named Annabelle, had been a carrier of the parasites. And with Annabelle having had sex with others, the parasites soon spread around the complex creating wide-scale carnage. In this era, David Cronenberg was understandably labelled the Baron of Blood and the King of Venereal Horror. But these terms tend to overlook the high levels of intelligence and invention in his movies. And it's certainly intentional that Hobbes' parasites look like a cross between a phallus and a human stool, dreamt up by Cronenberg, no doubt, to invoke maximum repulsion in the viewer. The title of Cronenberg's original script definitely summed up the plot perfectly, Orgy of the Blood Parasites. Paul Hampton is a little underwhelming as our hero of sorts. He plays Roger St. Luke, a doctor who tries to survive the onslaught. Lynn Lowry is far more appealing as Nurse Forsyth, St. Luke's colleague and girlfriend. And it came as no surprise to me to learn that Lynn did not get on with Paul Hampton in real life. It's said that Cronenberg cast Miss Lowry in the role because of her strange screen presence and her haunting eyes. And after wooing her with bunches of flowers, David was fortunate enough to secure the British horror icon Barbara Steele for the part of Betts. 
a deeply glamorous lesbian resident at Starliner Towers. Her bath time encounter with one of the parasites is among several gruesome highlights in this film. Shivers effectively draws on elements from George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead and Don Siegel's Invasion of the Body Snatchers. And it also shares similarities with J.G. Ballard's novel High Rise, which came out the same year. Funnily enough, David was offered a chance to make High Rise into a film some years later. He declined because, with shivers, he kind of made it already. Beyond your wildest nightmares and brings you face to face with terror. Beyond the power of priest or science to exercise. High Rise eventually got made into a film in 2015 and it was directed by Ben Wheatley and clearly a fan of Ballard's work. Cronenberg adapted his 1973 novel Crash into a film in 1996. David Cronenberg has always dealt with weighty concerns, existential, even deeply philosophical issues, exploring death disease, decay, and showing countless ways in which a rational mind can degenerate into an irrational one, or how infection or contamination can affect a group or an entire nation. Alan Coleman, who's credited on screen as Alan Majikowski, plays Nicholas Tudor, a Starliner resident whose mind and body have been taken over by the parasites. And Susan Petrie portrays his wife Janine, a woman who suffers from her husband's increasingly unhinged behaviour. There's an important scene in the movie in which Susan Petrie has to cry. The actress wasn't able to do so. She consented to being slapped on the cheek by Cronenberg until she shed tears. The problem was that Barbara Steele didn't know of this arrangement and she assumed the director was assaulting her fellow actress. So when the last take was finished, Barbara grabbed hold of David, lifted him up by the scruff of the neck, and threatened him. Luckily, the matter was soon resolved, and they all got on again. But it goes to show you, Barbara Steele's not only a scream queen, she's also a double hard Brit you don't mess with. Lynn Lowry, who plays Nurse Forsyth, is mostly known for appearing in horror flicks. She was in David E. Durston's I Drink Your Blood and George A. Romero's The Crazies before taking part in Shivers. She then popped up in Paul Schrader's 1982 remake of Cat People. Lynn has gone on to appear in several other genre movies over the years, including Basement Jack, the 2010 remake of the crazies and torture chamber. The Nicholas Tudor character is at the center of one of the best practical special effects scenes I have ever witnessed. It's the one in which Tudor is lying in bed as the parasites start moving about beneath the skin of his exposed stomach. It's so well done, it astonishes me to this day. The special makeup effects were carried out by the excellent Joe Blasco. This film was produced by Ivan Reitman, who went on to direct such notable movies as Stripes, Ghostbusters, Twins, and Ghostbusters 2. The great American director, Jonathan Demme, was originally considered to direct this movie. Funnily enough, he hired Lynn Lowry as the leading lady for his movie, Fighting Mad which came out the following year. Shivers was filmed at Nuns Island in Quebec. Shooting took place between the 21st of August and the 17th of September, 1974. Built in 1962, the Tourelle Sarive was used for Starliner Towers. The film was first shown in the States on the 26th of September, 1975, and in Canada, 
on the 10th of October that same year. This film was released as Shivers in Canada and the UK. In Quebec, it was either labelled The Parasite Murders or Frizon. And in the States, it was called They Came From Within. And yes, my podcast is named after this fabulous movie. Despite initially receiving mostly negative reviews, Shivers did very well at the Canadian box office, even though it led to David being kicked out of his home on dubious moral grounds, and its content even being discussed by the Canadian government. Despite all this, David's remarkable career was now up and running. I'm Stephen Archibald, and thank you very much for listening to my podcast, They Came From Within, Cult Movie Reviews. You can follow me if you like, and all of my episodes are available through most podcast hosts. If you ever get offered to take part in an orgy in a tower block, I strongly advise you to turn it down. Take care of yourself, and goodbye for now. What are they? Raging demons from another world? Bloodthirsty creatures that must be killed? Or incarnations of absolute evil? They possess men, women, and children, and drive them to acts of unbelievable horror. No one is safe from them. No power on earth can stop them. The only escape is death. If this picture doesn't make you scream and squirm, you'd better see a psychiatrist. Quick.